So it's 4.15am, another Sunday morning and another sunrise photo shoot. I am so excited. Today I'm going to go to the Golden Gate Bridge. Oh, actually, I'm going to go above the Golden Gate Bridge to Slackers Hill. It's a bit of a climb, but again, the fog's rolling in and it should be absolutely awesome. Okay, I can't see anything because I've got the iPhone shining in my face. Oh, this has been... Okay, the last 30 minutes just walking around here have been really tricky. I've been trying to find a composition and doing that in the dark's not easy at all. But I think, um, I think I've got something. So basically what I've done, and you can't see anything behind me, but I'll show you when it gets a bit lighter. But I've set my tripod up. There's a rock in the foreground and then there's a leading line of path which I've walked down about four times, <laughs> um, which goes to the bridge, which you may or may not be able to see if I just point it over there. Um, and you can see hopefully behind me that the sun is rising. It's going to be beautiful. The fog's not come though. There's no fog. The fog's very unpredictable. But it may come. The fog horns are going. Um, I read something last night on the internet that said the fog horns are manual. So they don't automate them. They just, it's just manual. It seems random. Some guy looks out. If you can't see a certain building, then he presses the button. Fair enough. Okay, let's see if we can get a great picture. Okay, so I've finally got in, in a good position. I've been right down there, as far as you can see. Back up here, then back down there, and then back up here. As it's got lighter, I've decided this is the best position. So, what I've got is, down here, I've got some really great foreground. The light's coming from over there and lighting this up. It's creating fantastic light on the side of this hill here. And then we've got the Golden Gate Bridge over there. We've got some amazing um, lights on the streets over there. And I want to get a shot before those go. We've got the city over there that's going to hopefully get illuminated by the morning light. And what can be better than being out on a morning and just being above everything else? To be honest, there's a bit of car noise. It's not great, but... Whew. Relax. So just to talk you through some of the camera settings, basically I've got it set on RAW, obviously, F9, which is coming out about a three second exposure. It's a little bit windy. I'm going to take my camera strap off. I've got a soft 0.9 ND filter on. Well, I've just seen over there, just above the clouds, and I'm not sure if you can see it on, on the camera, but just above the clouds over there is Mount Diablo. It's just peaking above. That's one of the biggest mountains in the area. Anyway, back to this. What I really need is on this road down here, I'm hoping the car's going to come, and then a three second exposure should hopefully give me some good trails. Probably need a bit longer, but I can lower the ISO a little bit more yet to get a longer exposure. Um, this grass is obviously blown in the wind, so it's going to be a little bit blurred, but I'm not too bothered about that. I think it'll just add some dramatic effect. So, let's go and take, here we go, first exposure. I've got it on mirror up as well. Let's have a look at that. Okay, I'm going to move over here. I found a better composition sometimes. So before I was just over there, you can see my bag and things. I've just moved probably 10 meters, five meters even, to here and got a very different foreground. Thumb's just not coming up. It's just not, it looks pretty good over there, but it's just not. Ooh. Needs to be more punch. Um, wow, the clouds over there look pretty good, though. <laughs> that road's good as well. But it's like this is this is a rule in landscape photography: is stick with what. So, watch Ben Horn's channel. He's he he takes one or two images on a photo shoot, and that's such a great discipline to have. 
Because if you, if you just try and take lots of photos, and you don't put a lot of effort into one, then you end up with a lot of average photos. But if you put a huge amount of effort into one photo, then that one photo is going to be the best it can be. And you're much more likely, at the, after a few weeks of doing that, get better photos. So don't keep looking at lots of different things and taking lots of different compositions. Look around, find the one that you think is going to be best and then stick with that one. It was going to make a better photograph in the end. Anyway, I've moved over here. I've got a little bit of a different foreground. I'm still taking this composition with this leading road of the road, leading line of the road here, the Golden Gate Bridge and the city. And I just need the sun to come up. Fingers crossed. Okay, here comes the sun. I need to get back to my camera. Oh, it's looking really good. So the sun's rising now over there. And can you see how, if I just, um, you see that it just brings out so much more texture now in the side of this mountain. And then the, the, that path just leads you around to the bridge. And hopefully it's gonna light up the city as well, which is just gonna make more definition there. It's just gonna look so fantastic. Wow. Okay, so I've got my wide angle lens on now. I'm not. To be honest, I haven't got a um, so I haven't got a grad filter on now because the, the, the foreground is going to be really light when the sun comes out, and the sky because it's really early in the morning is still not really bright. So I think I'm going to get away with the dynamic range of the camera without any graduated filter. Um, if I think it's close, and I can I can do some um, exposure stacking. In Photoshop, but I don't really like to do that. I'd prefer to use a graduated filter, but I think I'm going to be good. Okay, I'm going to take a few shots and I've taken my cable off now because it was getting too windy. I think it's going to be, it's going to be good. As you can probably tell now, the sun's fully out. Um, it just looks really good. Sometimes, I'm, I'm still taking exactly the same um, composition, but I, I, I've just altered it slightly. And sometimes, as you can see, I've, I've, I've lowered my tripod, and it's a good idea not just to move left or right, just to get just slightly different angle on something, but sometimes you just go lower. So all these um, grasses that have di are dying off now because of the drought, are, are now a, a really good foreground, but by getting down a little bit, then you get a very different perspective. So if I just go down from here and then lift the camera up, you'll see that the perspective is very different from there to down here. And that can often lead to a very dramatic image. Now, we're just getting the light lighting up the city now, so we're getting more definition in the city. We're getting to the point where we're getting past that sort of golden, golden light, but I think we've got another 10 minutes of photography. So overall, when I got back and looked at these images on Lightroom, I I was really pleased. I, I'd, I'd taken the same scene from a few varying angles and I think I got some really good compositions. I, I was really pleased, but there was two images that, that really stood out to me. And I suppose the process that I went through in going and photographing the bridge from Slackers Hill was one of discovery, really. Uh, I'd hoped to have fog on the, on the morning that I went up there last Sunday morning, but I didn't, unfortunately. So I had to improvise and, and learn from those conditions. And when I do go back next time and there is fog, then I feel like I, I, I want to know a better place to go. Even though I've been there a few times before, then I probably hadn't spent as long photographing and really sort of studying the area and studying the light in the morning. 
So, so when, I, when there is fog, I'll definitely be able to take a better image. Now I've come back and I've looked at them on Lightroom and I printed them out. I always like to print my, my best photos out or what I feel are my best photos and then live with them a little bit more in print because I feel that then I get to understand what's worked and what hasn't a little bit better than just seeing them on the screen. So this one up here is, is my favorite image. Um, and it's interesting actually, because it doesn't show the whole bridge. I, I took this, I zoomed in a little bit tighter and I thought, mm, I'm not sure that's gonna work. But when I got back, it's actually probably one of, one of my two favorite images. I really like the, the way that the, uh, as I said in the video, that the, the, the path leads to the bridge and then the, you sort of eye follows up the bridge here and um, to, to the city in the background and to this light area. The sun was obviously just rising at the time, so this is really great light here. The, 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 the city just really looks great and it looks so much better printed than it does on the screen because you can pick out some of the detail in the light areas of the city. I like the colors, I like the contrast of the red bridge. Um, and I really, I really do like this image. But I took another image as I was leaving that I didn't show on, on the vlog, which is another, another view, probably about 10 meters higher up. The light wasn't great by then, the golden hour had gone. Um, but this image, which I'm gonna put up now, looked best in black and white. Um, and I printed it out and I feel that it's really strong black and white image. I, I tried it in color as well and it just didn't work. Um, I really like this, the, the way the light's catching these um, grasses in the foreground, this diagonal line here and another strong diagonal line of the bridge here. Um, I really like that I can see the, the, the straight roads of the, of the blocks in, in the background. So yeah, I, re I really like this as well. And I think again, it goes to show that you just got to try different things, come and edit them on Lightroom and then, and then print them out, go and print some photos out because I think you'll start to see your photography differently if you see it in print. So, so thanks again for watching. I really do appreciate the support. If you like this video, then thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed already, then subscribe. And if you subscribe, then you know join the no no notification so that when I post new stuff, which I'm gonna be doing more and more regularly now, then you'll get a notification. And please do comment below. I, I read all the comments and I respond to them re really quickly and it really, does encourage me to do more stuff. So again, thanks a lot and see you next time. And probably just enough time just to tell you a few interesting facts about the Golden Gate Bridge. So as my son, who we call Stato, often says that um, each tower has got 600,000 rivets. There we go, interesting fact. Another interesting fact is that well, actually, before I say that, it's 80 years old, the Golden Gate Bridge to this year, but when it was being built 80 years ago, the military, they wanted it to be painted yellow and gold stripes, which would have looked awful, wouldn't it?